Tyler Crow, I don't know if anybody's been a bigger Brookfield bull than me over the past few years. And we're going to talk specifically about Brookfield Renewable right now. If you go back to late 2020, the stock's down over 40% over the past year. It's down more than 30%. Brookfield Renewable was a wonderful investment for a long time, and that hasn't been the case in recent years. Tyler Crow, you ready to have this conversation with me? I've been waiting to have this conversation for a long time, Jason. I'm Jason Hall. This is The Smattering. Before we get into this conversation about Brookfield Renewable, and I think it's going to be well worth it for you to stay to the end. After the video, I want you to check out our special link, fool.com forward slash The Smattering. The Motley Fool sponsors our videos, and they're going to give you their 10 best stocks to buy right now. Be sure to check that link out. You can do it now, and we'll just wait. Tyler, you want to we'll wait for a minute? Yeah. Make a cup of tea. All right. Hit pause, people. You back? Okay. Tyler, I think they're back. So let's talk about Brookfield Renewable. It owns renewable energy assets and invests in these assets. Legacy business was hydroelectric dams. And six or seven years ago, I think it really first stepped into wind and solar as the costs came down so much that those became really profitable places to invest. They've started to look at energy storage more recently. They've made some investments. It's a yield co. The idea is you buy it and own it. And as an investor, as an owner in this business, a big part of your return is going to be the dividend that they pay. And they say they want to grow five to 9% every year and generate really good total return. You and I did a video, Tyler, where we talked about next era energy partners and how its thesis is getting upended because its yield has gone up as its stock price has come down. And maybe it's not going to be as useful for next era energy as a financing tool for its renewable energy. And I had somebody actually asked in the comments, do we see the same risk for Brookfield Renewable? Where do you stand with Brookfield Renewable right now? I still own it. Let's start from there. But I think you're very right in the sense Brookfield Renewable is different than you know, Nextera Energy Partners in that Brookfield originally, Brookfield Renewable was designed because, not because Brookfield Asset Management were developing a lot of solar and wind power assets and they want a place to drop them down to. Brookfield was very good at opportunistic investing. It happened to see a time to buy hydroelectric assets in Colombia and everybody thought it was super risky. And they're like, no, this is a cash flow business doing electric utilities. What are you guys talking about? It was a brilliant trade. And then a lot of the initial acquisitions it made in solar and wind were very opportunistic uh, investments. They were buying other yield codes that were in or teetering on chapter 11 bankruptcy. Bargain basement opportunities to buy great high quality assets at bargain price. That's the Brookfield thesis, right? That's what they do. Yeah. They did it for a long time now. And Brookfield Renewables transitioned a little bit more. Like they're doing a lot more internal development, call it organic growth, really, you know, trying to build the cash engine from within. And it's changed a little bit of the kind of the profile on how they run it, but it isn't quite the same thing like Nextera Energy because it's not like Brookfield Corporation is just sitting on or developing all these assets and needs a place to park them uh, once they're done. So slightly different in that end. But some of the things that we talked about in Nextera Energy Partners still apply. Right, because the cost of capital, right, which is the thing that's undermining potentially undermining next year energy and next year energy partners ability to grow it still applies, right? You still got to raise money. It applies to, do to everybody. The cost right. of capital is up for everybody. Let's say they want to acquire a wind farm or they want to build a solar farm. They have to raise the money to do it. They can use cash, right? Some cash they have on the balance sheet. Generally, it's not enough. They generally turn their cash over pretty quickly. They can raise capital by taking on debt which is something they do pretty regularly, right? Interest rates have shot up substantially over the past you know, year and a half. The other way is issue equity. And you have a, an interest rate on your issued equity as well. When you pay a dividend, you can think about that as the proxy for the interest rate. And right now the dividend yield for Brookfield Renewable Partners is a little less than 5.2%, right? It's been between five and five and a half percent. And Tyler, I think that's an important thing to point out is that's actually... That's a pretty reasonable cost of capital, right? For years, Brookfield Renewable had a dividend yield north of 6%. Like we said, when it was just like hydro assets that were just spewing out cash with not much growth, different risk, different growth profile, but it was much, much higher dividend yield than it is today. And 5.1% 
equity yield versus some of the other things we're starting to see in the market. And relative to what we're talking about is that you know, debt is more expensive. If treasuries are in the 5%, 5.5% range, your corporate debt's probably going to be higher. So yeah. you look at that and go, wow, that's pretty cheap equity. And I want to take it a little bit further too. So you look at some of the other yield codes, similar business model companies out there like Clearway Energy, Next Era Energy Partners we talked about, their dividend yields are six percent and above right so their cost of capital immediately is at it from an equity perspective but when you think about a clearway energy and a brookfield is, again these two their reason for existing is very different than next year energy partner next year energy develops assets they acquire assets generally at a corporate level and then they drop them down they sell them to next year energy partners for brookfield renewable and it's the same way for clearway because um, Global Investment Partners is the parent company of Clearway Energy and the parent company of Brookfield Renewable is Brookfield Corporation, which is also the majority owner of Brookfield Asset Management, right? So this is an asset management business and they're not looking for a drop down entity. It, it, it's a co-investment vehicle is the way that they use it that aligns with what Brookfield Renewable does and they can use all of the investment capacity of those, all of those various entities to fund these deals. And that can help absorb some of the risk for different parties. And you have Brookfield Renewable that also has experience in operating these, um, these facilities that there as well. So I don't think it's even close to the same kind of potential problem that you would see for maybe a next year energy partners. I think Brookfield Renewable of all of the Yulcos, right? I think is the one that's probably the most investable and one that I would say probably is at the top of my list of ones that I would buy if I was deploying money right now.